Hey everybody, what's going on? Today I want to talk to you guys about what you need to do to become successful in the field of personal training. For those of you who are new to this channel or this is the first sort of fitness sort of video that you're watching, I have been working in the field for over a decade now and so I've been lucky enough to work as a manager, a trainer, a franchisee, an employee, etc. And so having also worked in different countries around the world, I'm very sure something that I have to say will resonate with you and will help you out. Ultimately, you have to decide what advice you want to take, what you want to listen to and what you don't. These are the things that worked for me and obviously there are trainers that are doing the complete opposite and are also very successful, but each to their own and this is really one of those like uh, very individualistic um, jobs that really depends on the style of training that you do, the style of clients that you want, the sort of business you want to get into, etc. So let's consider this a first of many videos to come. So today I'm just going to start from the first few questions that I've gotten from you guys, especially on Instagram, and so we'll kind of take it from there. The first question that everybody asks me is how much money can you make in this job? Now, when you are first starting out in this job, you have no experience, you've never played any sport. Let's say you're graduating from a degree in business and you just want to get into this job because you really enjoy working out. <coughs> you're going to have to be willing to start right at the bottom. And so what that can obviously mean in a lot of different companies is starting at minimum wage. Now, even that being said, when you work for a gym, there's a lot of different structures that come in. The first is you work for an independent gym or like a private gym where they will give you a couple of clients or you bring your own people in. Their pay structure will be obviously very different. You might also be required to get your own insurance because they don't you know, provide the insurance for you. Then you can go work at a gym as a franchisee, which is, for example, what I did at Fitness First. And so what happens in that structure is you pay the gym a rent, but they provide you with clients and the facilities as well as um, like they give you like new people to talk to, new conversations. You get to have your name on a board. You do have to wear the uniform because you represent the company. You do need to get your own insurance in that um, case, but insurance is not very, very expensive. I don't remember how much I paid, but it was only a couple hundred dollars a year. And so you charge whatever you want to the client and you just have to pay your fixed rent to the gym um, every week or bi-weekly. Then there is the structure where you work under a commission, such as at Good Life. And I don't know if they really market it, but that is how it works. So you can start at different levels of trainers. I believe their lowest level is one, but I've never seen a level one trainer at Good Life. Um, and then what happens is each level of trainer has its rates that it charges the client. And then what happens is you charge the client a certain rate and then you get a certain percentage of that. But the good thing is you don't have to worry about insurance. The gym will feed you the clients. It's your job to have that conversation and sell them the training. And then you get a commission for every sale that you do. And then last but not least, if I'm not wrong, you can go work at a gym. I believe like, I think LA Fitness has this structure i'm not sure because i've never worked or been there but basically they give you the clients they sell the training your job is only to train the person and in that case you just get paid a certain like wage or whatever but in most cases i would say 99 percent of any gym that you work at, you only get paid for the hour that you are training a client. So this means that if you don't have a client and you're just waddling around in the gym talking to members, you do not get paid. Um, I think now gyms are starting to change their structure a little bit where in the beginning they call it prospecting. So that's when you're walking around the gym, talking to clients, letting them know that you work there, you obviously have your uniform on and you're potentially getting more leads for your business. They will pay you like 
a minimum wage or like a set wage for the hours that you have to do that and you have to do it for maybe like 15 to 20 hours a week until you reach like your um like it's like a minimum requirement of how many hours you have to work okay wow i didn't realize my hair looked that bad <laughs> okay so that's kind of like the pay structure and so the pay can start as low as minimum wage and then it can go up to i would say I want to say like $50, $60 an hour or higher, depending on the level of trainer that you are. Now, if you work for yourself completely and you want to set your own hourly rate, people often say like, how much should I charge or whatever? If you are just starting out, you know, I would probably say like, go on a Facebook group or talk to the trainers in that gym, talk to... Um, the other staff members there and see how much like the average or median uh, rate is like let's say if the average trainer in that gym is charging 25 and you rock in and you're like I'm gonna charge a hundred dollars an hour it's probably gonna be a little bit more <laughs> difficult for you to get clients it also really depends on where you work your geographical location is so important in this business like if you are working out of like downtown Toronto or downtown Sydney or London, your rates are going to be very different than if you work out of like Blacktown in New South Wales or in Hamilton in Ontario or in Surrey in BC or in like Southall in <laughs> England. So these things can also matter like if you're in a business district if you're in a residential area if you are out in the farmlands all these kind of like little factors also really play a key role when it comes to um establishing a rate for yourself it doesn't necessarily have to do with like your worth or whatever sometimes it just really has to also do with where you are okay when you work for yourself you got to take care of everything you got to market you got to get your own clients you got to get your insurance you have to make sure your certifications and everything stay up to date you got to do the courses so everything is completely in your hands and so any leg is very much your responsibility you have to pay your own taxes and you know all that sort of stuff so that's kind of like the whole like how much you can probably earn and really it can go from whatever the minimum wage is at the time that you are watching this video to like over a hundred dollars an hour if you're working for yourself because you're setting your own rates the next question is what gym should i work at what is the best gym to work at in canada or united states or australia and I have to tell you, I do not know the answer. In Canada, I have worked at Good Life Fitness only. In Australia, I worked at Fitness First only. In Wales, I worked at this small little private gym owned by this one guy that was like not even 800 square, square feet only. And so like, I have not worked for a lot of different companies. I just stayed at one company for a long period of time or I worked for myself. Um, I actually did briefly work for Snap Fitness in Australia, but they like heavily screwed me over. Like they were like, we're gonna sponsor you, but then they were like four days before Christmas and like two months before my visa expired, they're like, oh, actually we don't wanna pay all the money for it. Like it was just really stupid. So I really wouldn't count me working at Snap Fitness as anything. Um, and for anyone wondering, I did try and contact the Snap Fitness like company itself and let them know what was going on, but like nobody cared. So that's kind of like, just forget about it. Just, <laughs> okay. So I know in my experience, there's a lot of people who don't like good life. They like are super anti good life or whatever. They think, you know, they took their money or whatever. But I had a great experience there. I was very fortunate enough at my first job at Good Life to have an incredible manager. I had incredible colleagues and like I really kind of came in very inquisitive and eager to learn. So I asked a lot of questions. I asked to shadow trainers. You know, I was like, can I follow you around please? Like when you're with your clients, I would sit down with them and like uh, try it and figure out like how do you find a shoulder injury? How do you know if somebody has pain in their neck? Um, and so like that was also where one of the trainers who I still look up to who's like my big brother and my coach took me under his wing and taught me a lot about strength training. So 
I had a wonderful experience at Good Life and when I was at Fitness First I had a relatively good experience. Unfortunately they couldn't sponsor me or whatever and that's when I had to leave. Um, but I loved it there. I loved the staff there. I loved working there. I loved the location. I worked in CBD Sydney. So you have to find your own place and ultimately if you don't have the personality where you don't want to get along with people, you don't want to learn, you just have a negative outlook on everything, you're not going to like any place. But if you go into any gym ready to learn, you know, eager to like really become better at this job, you can get a lot out of any experience. Even the gyms where I had bad experiences as an independent owner or an employee, I really learned a lot there. You have to decide where you want to work. You got to make your decisions. And sometimes even when you make the wrong decision, you learn some incredible things from it. So don't be afraid to like risk going and working at a gym that you might not know a lot about, but it could be the only gym that accepted your job application, right? If there is a gym that you're already going to and you love, or if there's a gym that like is very specific to your kind of training needs, let's say you're a CrossFitter or a power lifter or an Olympic lifter, or you're an athlete, then you should stick to those gyms because they will really kind of cater to the style of training or the sort of training you want to do and the clients will also sort of be into that. The only disadvantage sometimes in those sort of gyms is also that most of the members who come to those gyms already know what they're doing so they don't particularly need a coach. They're there because they want to do that specialized style of training. But if you're just starting out as a personal trainer, I would say apply everywhere and just go to any gym where you get accepted, you go in, you have an interview and you like the vibes of that place. Just trust your gut a little bit, okay? So these are like the two fundamentals in terms of getting paid and where you will get paid from or by. Um, if you feel brave enough to start your own business right from the get-go, do it. But then you have to be willing to do all the work that it takes to market yourself in any shape or form, whether you want to hand out flyers or you want to go on social media or you want to do paid advertising on Instagram or Facebook. That's completely up to you and you got to figure that out. I have never really done social media marketing for my business. For me, it's mostly been through referrals. But because I've been doing this job long enough, I think it's a little bit different for me now. Um, so I don't know how it's working for trainers who are just starting out. But ultimately, you got to do that initial hustle. Like even when I worked for a gym, I used to get to the gym around like quarter to five. I think the gym opened at 5 a.m. And I would stay there till 10 p.m. for the first three months of my job. The first three months are very, very crucial to your longevity in the field. You gotta be there every single day. It doesn't matter if it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Talk to members, keep your uniform on, work out there, you know, help out anywhere you can, put the weights away, ask members if they need help with anything, let people know that you are there. The more people see your face in that gym, the more they will feel comfortable talking to you. There could be a member there who's been there for 10 years, but they just never felt comfortable talking to a trainer until you came along one day and just said, hey, good morning, you know? So the first three months, the best thing you can do if you want to be successful in a gym working as a trainer is be there from open to close. Sit there all day long. Don't be lazy and like sit on Instagram or whatever. Walk around, talk to the members, put the weights away, ask if anyone needs help, make sure you keep your uniform on. And these are not hours that you're getting paid for, but these are hours that will pay off. The longer you are there, the better you will build your business. I did this for probably two or three months every single day. I was like, no social life, no friends. This is it. I'm here to make money. And I will say in about six, uh, not six weeks, maybe like nine ish weeks i was earning i was working over 60 hours a week i was earning a lot of money and i had a one bedroom apartment on bondi beach 
and I lived there and I worked very hard and so people would come over and be like oh my god you have this amazing apartment you're so lucky and I'm like I hustle I wake up at four o'clock every day I go to bed at one in the morning I used to spend my nights like doing online courses or reading books, I just wanted to be better, you know, as a businesswoman, as a person, as a trainer, in any shape or form, I wanted to be better. And so I really hustled, right? So that's something you really, really have to be willing to do. The most important skill that you can have in the beginning when you start as a trainer are your personable slash social skills. You have to be comfortable and approachable as a person. If your body language just screams, don't talk to me. If you're going to the gym at 5 a.m. and leaving at 10 p.m., but the whole time you've got your legs crossed, you're sitting on your phone, checking out TikTok videos or on Instagram or whatever, nobody's gonna talk to you. You have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone and just be friendly and approachable to people. And I find that when you work as a personal trainer, you really wear that mask all the time. Like even when I'm in an elevator or whatever, and I see somebody going to the gym, I'll be like, hey man, good job you're going to the gym. Sometimes that's the hardest part. And so I'm not always telling the universe that I work as a trainer, but giving people that affirmation, you know, and then I see them again and I'm like, how's your workout? Then the next time I'll be like, oh yeah, by the way, I do work as a trainer. So I know how incredible it can be to take that first step. And so, the next time it could be like, oh, um, you mentioned you were a trainer, like whereabouts do you work? Are you taking clients? And so for me, I have been my own marketing tool where I will just tell everybody what I do without any shame. So in the beginning, you have to be willing to talk to people. If the gym feeds you clients or people that you have to sell personal training to, don't try and sound overly smart or like confuse them with stupid muscle things and like all this stuff. Like that's not your job to like wow them with huge you know anatomical terms just be friendly approachable listen to them ask them the right questions and the best question you can ask them is why someone will say okay i came in because i want to fit into a you know pair of size two jeans why you know i just don't feel good about myself why get to really understand who they are so you are able to not only help them on a physical level, but you over time will also become their motivator, their life coach, their health coach. You know, you will become their best friend, their therapist, and they will really grow to rely on you in a lot of different shapes and forms. Your clients, the longer that they're with you, they're gonna come in and they're gonna wanna vent. You really have to care about your clients to really be successful in this job. Um, because the more successful your clients are, the more they're going to speak about you to their friends and their colleagues and post about it on Instagram, like my trainer, you know, really gave me the strength that I needed, like I was able to run 5k without any pain, I was able to pick up my daughter and not have any back issues. These are the things that you're going to do. And so the job in itself can be very, very gratifying in a both financial as well as a personal or emotional level, but you have to be willing to do elements that are not necessarily advertised as a part of the job. And being a therapist or a counselor or being there to provide your clients with those essential tools that they need on the inside to become successful on the outside is really, really essential. So I'm gonna stop this video here, but let's get this conversation rolling more and more. Leave your questions and comments and concerns or whatever you have down below and let's make this happen for you. So let's make this happen. Let's get you successful in your job as a trainer. Let's get you earning money and living your best life because I can say having been in this job, having experienced so many highs and lows that 
I love what I do and I wake up every day more excited to go to work than I am sometimes to even come home. But I really, really like what I do. If you know anybody who is aspiring to become a trainer or wanting to become a trainer, share these videos with them because it's important that we also educate people on what the job truly entails and that can also help you figure out if this is something that you really want to do. Okay, so think strong always. Let's talk again very soon and let's get you living your best life. All right, take care. Bye.